This is the time to stand up now. We can't carry on like this. Good evening. I uh, longer intro, in my yeah, absolutely. The longer intro was because uh, some people last week had problems getting on at the right time and then were trailing or they'd missed the front. So uh, I went and read up on what is apparently good practice on these things. And ten minutes is meant to be the intro, which allows people to to you know say hello to each other and all of those things. I am chuffed a bit. I'm chuffed a bit because I've got this thing working. So for instance. Uh, Let's start. I can do this and I can put all of your posts across. So uh, my apologies and my thanks to all of you who uh, bared with me whilst we tried to get uh, uh, YouTube going and this going. But in the end, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. That was at fault. Uh, Restream, who I pay £400 to, <laughs> got back in touch and said, what I wanted to do can no longer be done. So uh, apparently Facebook have changed the rules or something. So that's what's gone on. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, well, uh, the issue is there's a couple of people who would normally uh, uh, join us today. So, uh, via, uh, so for instance, Charles isn't here and uh, a couple of others aren't here. But I set up a guest account uh, that allows people like Charles to still watch. And also uh, for the people who've shared lots of information for me with me today, who are all of our insiders. So uh, if you see anything that says Recky Sunt 9 guests coming up in any of your views, that's uh, because it's the... Uh, the people who can't view the traditional way. I think I've got the mic sorted as well, so I've had a... Uh, 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 oh, my, Mark. My, <laughs> the £3.49. I, put an, I think I put an explanation up, didn't I? I mean, I mean we, can have, we can have these frank conversations now because it's only a lot. You know, by the, time, uh, by the time it's finished with, and I don't mind, by the time it's finished with, I think it ends up at pound ten. So uh, if you if you, if anybody thinks I'm uh, I'm uh, making a fortune here, I don't even think it's uh, you can't really see it, but I've got a massive light in front of me and all sorts of gizmos and gadgets. Uh, hey Yvonne, nice you could join us. Uh, brilliant and yes, Debbie, you can hear me loud and clear because I've also got these headphones on. So I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd do it. You know, I'd, I'd I'd go for it properly today. Right, hey, okay, let's say. Uh, Let's get started. I want to read something to you. I don't usually read, but I want to read something to you. And I I suppose I can put it up uh, on the uh, whilst I read it because I think it's. Uh, let's see if you can see it like that. No, you can't. So let's let's do that. And you can. OK, so this dates back. This dates back to. Sorry, that's uh, Charles phoning me, so uh, uh, he's clearly not been able to get on. So uh, I'll uh, I'll deal with that later. Uh, this dates back to the thirty uh, first of October, twenty nineteen, and uh, so it's before the general election. And I think it's worthwhile reading in its entirety uh, before we we move on uh, with today's show because it's. Uh, it's been well over a year, and I think it's as relevant today as it ever has been. So uh, here we go. Earlier today, Jim McMahon took to Facebook to make his first move following the announcement of a general election. Surprisingly, it was not to attack Brexit, the Tories, or even the Lib Dems. It was to attack, it was to attack me, an everyday working class bloke who grew up in Westwood. He started by claiming that my attacks on him had been defamatory. He finished by warning others what would happen to them if they shared my posts. It will not have gone unnoticed that Jim McMahon, in his attack, refused to respond to the legitimate concerns that many people in Oldham share. Some of these concerns are not new. I am fortunate that with my experiences, 
I have been able to articulate these concerns in a manner that navigates the traps that Jim and his followers lay. Allegations of racism have not silenced me because I am not a racist. Allegations of criminal wrongdoing have not intimidated me. I have not been questioned, let alone charged of anything by the police. And threats to silence me, including one clearly endorsed by his assistant Arud Shah, have failed to silence me. I think it is only right that we revisit the concerns I have raised regarding Jim McMahon, so that there is no doubt that should this bully, and in my opinion, only a bully posts allegations like he has, and then deletes my measured response, decides to put his money where his mouth is. These are the concerns that I have raised. Number one. Jim McMahon used the funeral of Lee Rigby to keep news of grooming gangs from parents in Oldham. This was evidenced by an email leaked to me between the BBC and Jim McMahon whilst he was leader of Oldham Council. Two. Jim McMahon has a close relationship with Oldham Central Mosque. He attended a function at the mosque where the Twitter strapline was thanking them for all the votes. When allegations of the mosque's role in postal vote fraud were first raised, the mosque had claimed that it had nothing to do with politics. The Twitter evidence has proven this to be false. Jim McMahon has benefited significantly from a huge increase in postal votes. The majority of these postal votes are cast in the Asian wards that traditionally turn out for Labour. The, the 2015 postal vote figures was over 25%. I have an email exchange with the council who are currently refusing to provide updated figures for they have admitted that they have them. Ask yourself, why the council are refusing to release these figures. 4. Jim McMahon has been pictured with convicted criminals and illegal immigrants. I have shared the photographs of these. His office has claimed that he does not always know who he is pictured with. My point is that, it doesn't, is that he doesn't need to know. That he is posing with these people, especially when they are criminals, provides them with legitimacy. This was, after all, a technique that multiple paedophiles, including Jimmy Savile, used. A paedophile protector from Rotherham campaigned with Jim McMahon in 2015. This was reported in the national press. I shared the photograph, the name of the ex-Rotherham councillor, and also details of his role in helping protect paedophiles in Rotherham. 6. I shared that the chairman of Oldham Central Mosque was a convicted sex offender and that whilst Jim McMahon was leader of the Oldham Labour Group, that this sex offender has stood as the official Labour Party candidate in Coldest. 7. I shared ex-Councillor Raymond's report to the police that during the 2015 election campaign, Councillor Ryan Oliver, who at the time was working for Oldham Council, in work time campaigned for Jim McMahon. This, ac this action is unlawful especially as Oliver Ryan's role in the council appeared to be politically restricted. Kaiser Rehman has agreed to swear an affidavit. Both councillor... Both councillor Ryan, Oliver, Oliver Ryan, sorry, and Jim McMahon refused to comment. So also does this Oldham Council, also does Oldham Council Chief Executive Carolyn Wilkins refuse to comment. Eight. I have shared the sale of the former Glodic Baths during Perda. This took place during Jim McMahon's watch as official council minutes show that he was the appropriate portfolio holder. The sale of a public-owned asset to an influential community group during election time where the, sale could have, where the sale could affect how people vote is against the law. It is no more complicated than this. I have questioned the selling of public-owned assets to Asian groups without following due process. This has included land and buildings sold during Jim McMahon's tenure in Oldham Council. Consistently, these public assets were not sold in a way that returned maximum return for Oldham taxpayers. 
10. I have raised concerns that Jim McMahon's parliamentary office was used to secure the early release from prison of Dale Cregan's getaway driver. I was hesitant in believing something so ridiculous until photographs were leaked to me that showed his assistant, Arud Shah, very clearly knew Irish Jimmy and knew him well enough for them to be pictured on nights out together. I also shared a photograph where Irish Imi was present whilst Jim McMahon was out campaigning. As Jim McMahon has refused to quickly put to bed this ridiculous allegation, I have submitted an FOI response request. I am waiting for the response. I am very clear on why I think that Jim McMahon has waited until now to discredit me. And I go on. So that I wanted to share with you before we start, because today we've got a couple of things to get through, but that's, uh, this is going to be the first of them. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. On the 20th of November 2003, James Ignatius O'Rourke McMahon was elected councillor for the Failsworth East Ward of Oldham. Deeply ambitious, he ruthlessly rose to power and by 2011 he was already leader of the council. In 2015, exploiting a Labour Party loophole, he became MP for Oldham Western Royton. If only the people of the town knew then what they now know. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. Okay, so what's brought all this on? I think there's uh, some context is, is always important. The context is this. Jim McMahon, like I've told all of you, has been forced to give evidence to the grooming gang inquiry. And he has absolutely flipped. And he's also flipped because he has been reported to the Labour Party because of his, alleg because of his clear links to criminals. And this is what Jim has now resorted to. This, remember, this is the shadow transport minister, one of the most powerful men in the country. With Neil Wilby, Councillor Jenny, and Greater Manchester Police, as though I'm threatened of his links with Greater Manchester Police. If anything, Greater Manchester Police should be arresting Jim McMahon, never mind arresting me. There are hundreds of examples, so much worse, which are malicious, threatening and designed to marginalise anyone who calls him out. I'm calling you out, Jim, today. Just see. My primary focus is on the current referral relating to, this is the important word, allegations of corruption and child protection failures associated with the school. Him using this phrase, allegations, in the context he has, in the way he has, is the same as me sharing with you allegations I have of him converting to Islam. Or allegations I have of him leaving hotel rooms at four in the morning. Do you see? It's just silly mudslinging. But let's carry on. Let's carry on with where we're going with this. From his days as a councillor, he was courting individuals who were gangsters. This guy is Bullet Rahim. Bullet Rahim was convicted for killing somebody. Why would you go and pose at this guy's business? Neil Wilby has kindly, kindly proven or providing the uh, evidence that I couldn't get hold of that Jim McMahon provided a reference for Irish Jimmy. At the time, 
Jim McMahon would or should have been aware of this about Dale Cregan's getaway driver. He has been given jail sentences. This is in the trial, in the lead up to his uh, conviction, later conviction to be the getaway driver. 32 years old, right? 32 years old. At 32 years old, Mohammed Imran Ali, that's because that's what Irish Imi's real name is, Mohammed, admitted he has been given jail sentences totaling 16 years. So his entire adult life has been spent in prison or with jail or on parole from prison. His involvement in trading stolen goods, illicit steroids and Viagra. He admits driving Dale Cregan and two other alleged assassins, assassins out of Manchester following the gun and grenade murder of David Short in Clayton. But he denied one count of assisting an offender, saying he had no idea the men may have been involved in the murder until watching the TV news later. On the 51st day of his trial, 51st day of his trial, Ali agreed with the suggestion from the Crown's prosecutor that he had been involved in a life of crime. This is the individual prior to his conviction for his association with Dale Cregan, which Jim McMahon provided a reference for. Starting at the age of 15. And then it goes on and goes on with what some of his offences. In 2002, he was handed a four-year jail sentence for another drug, drug trafficking offence. Namely, possession of heroin with intent to supply. Ali was handed a seven-year jail sentence in 2004 for supplying heroin and cocaine. He was also handed a further 12 months in prison for breaching the terms of his release license. So already, already someone on parole has been breaching the terms of their license. Remember, this is prior, prior to Jim McMahon's involvement with this guy. And you can see the following story, September 2018. This, is, this isn't me picking on Irish Jimmy, by the way. I have no interest in Irish Jimmy. This is me questioning why the town's MP is associated with an individual such as this. Why he is linked to a convicted heroin dealer and the getaway driver of an Oldham cop killer. Because that's what that headline says. The getaway driver for police killer Dale Cregan has been recalled to prison. Now the question I have, and I believe the question all of you have, for Jim McMahon, is when he gave Irish Jimmy that reference to aid with his probation, was he recalled to prison after Jim McMahon had given him a reference? It's a simple question. He won't answer it, and I know why he won't answer it, because I think it incriminates his relationships with gangsters even more. Now, let's be clear. This is what he looks like. A career criminal jailed for ki being police killer Dale Cregan's getaway driver has been recalled to prison. Mohammed Imran Ali, 47, from Oldham, claimed to be a devout Muslim and humanitarian after he was released partway through his sentence. The MEN has now learned he's back behind bars. The convicted drug, tra drug trafficker which was allegedly found with two mobile phones. Ali is only allowed to have one according to the terms of his early release license. He was also allegedly found with a knife. I want to know if Jim McMahon gave 
this gangster his reference so he could stay in Oldham after which he committed this breaches which led to him being recalled to prison and of course a, com a convicted drug trafficker being found with two mobile phones means only one thing Ali was jailed along with De Cregan in 2013. He was released on license halfway through his sentence in 2016. He was sent back to Strangeways Prison on August the 7th for breaching the terms of his early release. Remember, this article is dated the 1st of September 2018. So when... Did Jim McMahon provide this guy with his reference? The parole board will now consider the breach. Ali was standing beside Cregan in the dock in 2013 when he was convicted of, assess of assisting an offender. He was jailed for seven years. Ali admitted he had driven Cregan to a safe house in Leeds after Cregan carried out the savage gun and grenade murder of a gangland rival, having shot dead Short's Mark, son Mark in a pub months earlier. He claimed he had no idea Cregan had been involved in the murder when he agreed to take him to Leeds. The jury disagreed and convicted Ali of assisting an offender. So they convicted Ali of assisting Dale Cregan. Ali has never taken a driving test. That's right. The getaway driver of Dale Cregan had never taken a driving test. While on the run, Cregan killed PC's Nicola Hughes and Fiona Bone in another gun and grenade attack. During his trial, Ali admitted he had served jail sentencing sentences totaling 16 years, starting when he was given a three-month sentence for assault when he was just 15. Why is Jim McMahon giving this man a reference? Ali claimed in court that he had left behind the life of a drug dealer and was concentrating instead on selling steroids and designer goods which had fallen off the back of a lorry. He also got involved in the security business, co-owning a firm which had 68 bouncers on its books. He has never held down a legitimate job although he claimed job seekers allowance before being jailed. Here is the cartel link. Just weeks before he was recalled to prison, he appeared on Prabash Bangla TV, a YouTube channel where he promoted a planned 182 mile walk from Oldham to the Houses of Parliament to highlight the plight of the Palestinian people and a subsequent planned aid trip to Gaza. He also set up a petition calling for the safe distribution of aid from the UK to Gaza. In 2013, his trial heard Ali was covered in tattoos, including pictures of guns such as an AK-47 rifle and grenades. Muhammad Imran Ali was recalled to prison on August the 3rd for breaching his license conditions. Why did Jim McMahon give this man a reference on parliamentary letter-headed paper so he could stay in Oldham?
Anyone? Why did Jim McMahon, surely the MP for Oldham, West and Royton, has got to answer to the people of the town what his involvement with organised crime, killers and cop killers assistants are when he's seen with them, seen openly supporting them and even uses parliamentary letter-headed paper. These aren't allegations. These are facts. And this man, this man is now desperately engaging with a malicious campaign. And remember, right at the beginning last year, he threatened every one of you. He said, something bad will happen to you should you share what I post. And now, there are hundreds of examples. Jim, I'm not the elected lead. I'm not the elected MP of the town. You are the elected MP. You were the leader of Oldham Council. Let's have a look at some of these concerns. Let's have a look at them. One, Jim McMahon used the funeral of Leah Rigby to keep news of grooming gangs from parents in Oldham. I don't think there's any dispute on that anymore, is there? Two, he had a close relationship with Oldham Central Mosque. He attended a function at the mosque where the Twitter strap line was thanking them for all the votes. This is fact. The mosque claimed it had nothing to do with politicians. Then it, found, it came out that every one of its um, uh, management committee were Labour Party members in coldest. The fact, huge increase in postal votes when he got elected. Massive increase. Convicted with, convi you know, pictured with convicted criminals and illegal immigrants. Facts. A paedophile protector from Rotherham campaigned with him. Fact. The former chairman of Oldham Central Mosque. I've put a picture up of him next to him. Both of them nibbling samosas together or something and thumbs up nonsense with the red rosettes on. The glottic baths. Something the police still are refusing to investigate because they know the minute they have to investigate. The minute the police have to investigate, they'll have to arrest multiple Oldham council officers and multiple politicians and question them. And is there anyone left in dispute about the selling of public owned assets to Asian groups without following due process with everything I've released over the last 18 months? I'm going to give Matt Mann the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe he takes brown envelopes full of money. As a consequence, I don't believe any of the other councillors do. But what I do believe is that as a consequence of this cosy relationship, sackfuls of postal votes are delivered come election time. And the last question I raised, I got it slightly wrong. It wasn't Jim McMahon's parliamentary office wasn't used to secure the early release. It was to ease his sentencing, his parole, to allow him to stay in Oldham. Now, if we've got our dates right off that MEN article, it means it allowed him to stay in Oldham so he could wander around with two mobile phones and a knife in his pocket. Okay, let's 
carry on with the day. Let's uh, let me say some proper hellos. Uh, I'm reading uh, that some of you couldn't log on. I'm not sure why not, uh, because uh, once you've signed up, that's just for you to log on and click on the, uh, which is one of the reasons why I put a 10 minute uh, counter in hoping that uh, if there was any issues you'd uh, you'd work your way through, but you've uh, uh, you've got on. Uh, thanks, so Marilyn, you've got on anyone else? Uh, Victor, I noticed my account was cancelled. Sorry, Victor, that's not me. So uh, it would have been, uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe a month was up or something, Victor, but none of that is, uh, I'm not in control of any of that. I, that's the world of uh, YouTube, I'm afraid. Evening, Lee, good to see you. Anyone else? Uh, I don't think there's any doubt, Paul, but there's a relationship there. And there's a, a connection there that connects a, a network of gangsters together. Yes, Julie, that's the thing, isn't it? How can how can that reference be fixed for a man like this? It just beggars belief. How can you know after I've just shared with you what he'd done before he was convicted of Dale Cregan's uh, uh, being Dale Cregan's accomplice. Never mind what he did during. And Jim McMahon wants to threaten me. I'm not the one using parliamentary letter-headed paper to write references for the cop killer's sidekick. A cop killer from this own to our own town. Is that malicious, Jim? It's not malicious. It's called telling the truth. You should be suspended. Keir Starmer should kick you out of the Labour Party. How dare you, on the behalf of people of our town, give a reference to a man like that? Yes, David, Irish men, the Mushtaks are best mates. They are, it's a, I call them the Greater Glodic Cartel. And the football pitch, Mark, uh, the sale of land at the east of Alexander, which is where uh, uh, the Mushtaq got very angry at me when I revealed that. He, it, my understanding is the council have reneged on that deal uh, after it was made public, but I wouldn't get our hopes up, mate. I'm also hearing, and I, I don't know, I can't be 100% accurate because I can't get everything 100% out of the council. But you know the old bank that we tried to delay the sale of and the council said, no, uh, we're going to sell it. I'm hearing they've sold it to a, a partnership which involves a number of politicians, including the Mushtaks. I might be wrong on that, but that's the information I, I have been given. Of course, it would help if our open and transparent council actually sat, released in public who, were, who they were selling our assets to and for what, what, how much. Evening, Lynn. No, I, I don't know if there's any additional, uh, I mean, most of you have signed up. There's 64 people viewing out of 103 when I checked. So uh, there's 64 of you who are, who are, who are viewing tonight. I, I can see the figures at the top of my screen here, and it's only on one page. Uh, so you can all see. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, the, there's no YouTube link or anything like that. So there's only 63. And as you've seen this week, what I did was I chopped up elements of the show into uh, it's like, like half an hour segments and I put two chunks out. I put one chunk out on Tuesday or Wednesday and I put one chunk out this morning. So it's not all the shows that will go out. And then what I'll do a week later, so it's tomorrow, last week's show will just go up on YouTube in its entirety. So uh, that's what we'll do and we'll try and do that. But uh, I'm, I'm grateful to, to all of you who are, who are helping me keep going. So uh, let's, let's carry on. And the same as last week, if any of you want to phone in, uh, there's a there's an interview mode here. Just uh, uh, Moyab's got the link or Debbie's got the link and they'll put it up if any. I think I put it up last week. If any of you want to want to want to uh, want to join in, just call me.
a lighter tone perhaps. Sean, this week, Councillor Sean Fielding, leader of Oldham Council, said some of the visitors to Dovestone need to start taking responsibility for their own actions. It's easy to blame the authorities for a perceived lack of action, but this simply isn't true. The members of the partnership are doing their best in very difficult circumstances and we only have limited resources which are already being stretched. Best bit. Keep a straight face. If you live... Sorry, I'm already laughing. If you live in Oldham, try one of our many parks or green spaces near you rather than getting in your car and possibly having to wait ages for a spot on the car park. If you do take a chance and park illegally, then you risk a fine. A couple of weeks ago, Oldham put in tier three, Councillor Sean Fielding. I guess people have different definitions of local. Given that we are fortunate enough to have part of the Peak District National Park within Oldham, the borough of Oldham, I consider, consider this local, so he considered the entire Peak District National Park local when he went off to Derbyshire. Yeah, he went off to Derbyshire, remember? And when he went off to Derbyshire, here's his nice tweet. This was the third, possibly the fourth of his breaches. Breach number one was the litter pick. Remember when him and Angela Rain and a whole host of others went on a litter pick, wearing sandals and dog with their dogs and everything. Yes, Anita, he drove past Daisy Nook. What a hypocrite he is. So first of all, he goes on a litter pick with Angela Rayner and a couple of other councillors. Secondly, as Oldham makes national headlines and is a complete mess because the COVID cases are out of control, he ignored Foreign Office advice and went on holiday to Lanzarote. When he came back, if anyone can make sense of how he got himself tested, you'd find, or you'd be led to believe, I think, he didn't quarantine himself for the required number of days. And then, of course, off he goes with his girlfriend on a day trip to Derbyshire. And now, and now, he has the audacity to say, if you live in Oldham, try one of our many parks or green spaces near you rather than getting in your car. Yes, Mark. And all this time, all this time, All this time, he was paid for by the taxpayer whilst you're self-isolating. It's because, Ian, I'm of the opinion now these guys are protected. They are above the law. I've mentioned it several times. I honestly think these Labour Party politicians in our town, and remember, since what has took place, the senior police officer has been forced to resign, forced out of his job, after it emerged, 80,000 crimes, they wouldn't even write them down. This guy is a joke. But it gets worse. I was trying to make sense of this because I am a... Well, there's bits I understand. There's bits so I think we're all on the same page with here. Angela Rayner visits Royton at the start of Labour's Let's Vaccinate Britain campaign. Bollocks. At this date, at this time, the government advice, and remember Rayner, you're not in government. I can have a campaign. Doesn't mean that I can ignore the government's advice or the rules. The government's advice was to behave like you act like you have the virus. Act like you have the virus. 
What is Angela Rayner from the other side of Fails of Tame Side? She's not even the MP for the town doing at Royton Health Centre on her PR. And this you've got to uh, you've got to hear if I can get it working. Just give me a second. Colleagues about the efforts to vaccinate people in Oldham. Uh, it's incredible the amount of work that's going into vaccinating the most vulnerable first. Uh, so that of course we can start to lift restrictions and get back to a degree of normality. There's plenty of patients have been through the door this week uh, and we'll see many more over the next few weeks. Uh, but what's really critical is that doctor surgeries have enough supply of the vaccine in order to vaccinate all of the people who need it. I just want to say thank you to all of the incredible health service staff that are here in Brighton and the vaccination centres across Oldham and all of the other supporting staff too. So we've got council staff and people from other partner organisations supporting the operation here in other parts of Oldham. It's incredible and vital work that we're doing so that we can get back to normal. So why? Why is he going to Royton when the advice is to act like you have the virus? So off he goes to Royton and he puts that video up. Sorry, I copied that video off YouTube last night. He had 16 views at the time. So it's just PR. It's just PR. Nothing other than PR. And here is Mr. PR himself. Great coverage of our becoming first place in the country to prioritise vaccination of the homeless. Made it into the Daily Mirror. Homeless man gets COVID jab in city council's rough sleepers vaccine drive. So this is to do with Andy Burnham's uh, bed every night nonsense. I think even his pet reporter, Jen Williams, reported it as bollocks every night. This is just national PR attempting to divert away from what's going on here. The big issue. And here you go. Homeless couple given COVID-19 vaccine in Oldham. World first. They wanted to be the world first. So here they are all posing in what is believed to be a world first, Lee Ulher and Kelly Hennevy, or Hene, Kelly Hene, were given the vaccine at Oldham's A Bed Every Night Shelter, run by charity Deepol UK. Type in Lee Ulher's names. He's a serial criminal. But not only is he a serial criminal, have a look at this and I'll just zoom in and I'll before I bring up the story. This is the Oldham Times report on the 18th of December 2020. So what's that? Not even a month ago? Kelly Henney and Leola, 46 of Shaw Road, Oldham, fined for credit card theft and attempted fraud. I put aside what they were fined for. There's an address there. A man and woman fined for credit card theft and attempted fraud. Living at the same address in Oldham had been fined for stealing a man's credit card and attempting to use it fraudulently. It's the same couple. No, that's the thing then, isn't it? I have no issue. I'll get to that next. I have no issue, and I think this is important. I don't think any of us have any issue with prioritising the homeless. I know how disproportionately members of our armed forces end up on the streets and the mental health trauma that they have as a consequence of service. So I have no issue with supporting the homeless. In fact, I would have been pleased if the government, as its strategy, had decided that the homeless should be prioritised as one of the vulnerable groups. I have no issue with that. 
But that's not what happened in Oldham. What happened in Oldham was a publicity stunt to try and promote the council, Fielding and their mates in the national press as aren't we doing well here. And if any of you and all of you who've been following how Oldham is being played out in the national press, have you noticed how much profile it's getting at the moment? Don't for a minute think it's accidental. They've spent over £100,000 on new communications officers whose job is to promote Fielding and his mates in the council to try and distract away from what we are all revealing and the issues that we care about. So this, this gimmick, this gimmick is disingenuous. Not just to homeless people in our town or anywhere else. It's disingenuous to everyone else who is vulnerable or frontline workers who are desperately waiting for a vaccine. He's just grandstanding. But it gets worse. What if I told you? And remember, he said, and I wrote this down from his little speech he did. It's critical that doctors have enough vaccines. So he's clearly insinuating that there's a shortage of vaccines because then you can just turn it around and shout at the government that there's not enough vaccines, which is fine. No, I ain't got a problem. Criticise the Tories all you want. If there's not enough vaccines, I think they're actually doing as much as they can with the vaccines. My issue with them was uh, why they let my daughter go back to school for one day and then close the schools down and expose her to 29 other kids. I think they're doing as, you know, they're doing all right with the vaccines. They're doing the best they can, I think. But if, if it is critical, the vaccines are critical, and if it's critical, we have enough of them. Put aside whether you think someone who only a month earlier was convicted should be catapulted to the top of the list, claiming he's homeless when a month earlier he wasn't homeless. Put that aside. The information I'm being told is that the politicians like Fielding and the senior officers and all the rest of them have been fast-tracked for their va vaccines. I think you've just uh, summed that up there, Paul. I do not believe a single one of us, and this issue was brought to me by many of you. It was also brought to me by people inside, inside uh, law enforcement and the uh, CP, you know, in the in the criminal justice system, because they were appalled because it seems this guy is uh, notorious. What signal does that send out? I'd ask you to ask him, Anita, but uh, I presume he's blocked you. I think that's about right. I'm just going to... Put that on that side. <laughs> that sounds uh That sounds about right, Anita. You're blocked. All right. I'm still flabbergasted over that, Mark. I can't I don't understand how one it hasn't made the news that the MP for this town provided Dale Cregan's getaway driver with a reference. And then from what I can tell, 
after providing with him a reference so he could stay in the town, he was then caught with two mobile phones and a knife. How does he get away with it? How many in the Labour Party are bent? How can this man not be... investigated oh welcome to the party Anita Dr C blocked me probably a year ago okay let's move on So this happened this week. Hmm. Former Oldham councillor faces charge of downloading child porn. Now I'll get on with what I want to talk about this in a, in a moment, but uh, let me uh, let me put some context down first. I've known about this since last year. People in the Labour Party told me. Those of you who've been following what I've been posting and taunting's the wrong word, but trying to draw out of Sean Fielding what's gone on will know that what I've been alluding to. I'd posted last August, and you've seen the post by now, I think, uh, I put a post up last August that I, re I shared again last, last night or the day before where I made reference to Martin Judd. And my information is that his house was actually raided last May. And then after that, he mysteriously was removed from the council's list of councillors. There was no statement. There was no acknowledgement. Now, my issue isn't what he has done or what he has not done or what he may or may not have done. That will all come out in the fullness of the trial, which is scheduled for next year. But let's work through this together. A former Oldham councillor has appeared in court facing charges of downloading child pornography over a two-year period. So over a two-year period. Martin Judd, who was elected to represent the Hollywood Ward, Gene Stretton also represents the Hollywood Ward, by the way, appeared at Manchester Minchel Street Crown Court. He faced allegations that between February 2018 and the same month last year, so between February 2018 and February 2020, he downloaded 15 category A, 23 category B and 48 category C images. He pleaded not guilty to all three allegations. The 25-year-old of Jenny Street in Oldham case was put forward to a trial which is expected to run for three days in January next year. Remember Irish in his case on the 51st day of his trial, he admitted to something. He was also instructed to provide an adequate defence statement. From that, I can only conclude that he either failed to provide any form of defence statement or provided an inadequate one. Judd, originally from New Zealand, was elected in the local government elections in 2018. He was elected to serve a four-year term, but his departure was announced on the Oldham Council website. Ready? 
His departure was announced on the Oldham, well, he wasn't. He was just removed from the Oldham Council website. In fact, that's how his departure was announced. And when he was removed, no one, Sean Fielding, didn't dare say why. During his time on the local authority, he served as deputy cabinet member in economy and enterprise. He was also named as the president of the Manchester Trailblazers Rotary Club in 2017. The notification of his departure from Oldham Council stated if no application to fill the vacancy comes forward, it will have to wait until the next set of local elections were due to take place later this year. That's how the story finishes. So, I have a number of issues that I want to raise. And I think it's important for all of us that, you know, we shouldn't get involved in the whether he's done it or whether he's not. We should let the court decide. My issue isn't to do with that. My issue is to do with the reporting and the process. So first of all, the headline. I'll bring it back up so you can see it. Former Oldham councillor faces charges, charge of downloading child porn. One, the word former is completely inaccurate. Because when he was downloading his porn or the allegations of downloading his porn, he was a councillor. So the charges he stands trial for took place whilst he was a councillor. Using the word former tries to distance Oldham Council from what took place. Oldham Council can't be distanced from what took place. Secondly, the use of the term child porn in the headline, child pornography in the strapline underneath, and then child pornography again in the first sentence, is intentional. And I will complain to the Independent Press Standards Office this week because child pornography is not a term. Child abuse, child torture, child pornography. Por it's not, this isn't pornography. Pornography is something that's consensual and legal in some ways. Child porn, the word pornography is intentional, in my opinion, to try and minimise what has taken place. It's to minimise what has taken place. And the reporter used the term either through ignorance that he needs to be educated out of, or he did it on purpose because the Oldham Times, who still nonetheless surprised me by reporting this, but they reported it because they were worried, what if I reported it? Because I knew. Notice how Jennifer Williams, the chief investigator at the MEN, hasn't reported on this. And notice how your local democracy reporter, Charlotte Green, has had nothing to say on this. And notice that the issue that a newspaper and the council wants us to focus on because you finish an article on what you want to focus people on is what will happen to his empty seat. As if anyone cares what will happen to his empty seat. What we care about is, has anyone told the parents of all the children he had access to? Because he was a governor at Lyndhurst School, primary and nursery school, nursery school.
Now, we know this isn't a first instance, though, is it, David? That's the problem. Blythe would have been governors at a school. They had teachers who are paedophiles who are convicted as paedophiles that they want. I keep saying it, and at some point, people are going to believe me. And if they don't believe me, they will at least understand why I keep saying it. I honestly think Oldham Council is infested with paedophiles. A leader of the council, Lynn. I have a daughter. I'm not grandstanding here. I have a daughter. If my daughter went to Linda's school, I'd, I'd have the head teacher pinned against the wall and I'd want to know. This is wrong. And the newspaper focuses on what's going to happen with these empty seats. And as for the fingers, child porn. Everyone knows I, I have very little t time for the older uh, times. But that's disgraceful, lads. There's no such thing as child porn. That's disgraceful. It's despicable. I also have an issue with the process of how this finally came out the way it did. There's complete cowardice from Sean Fielding, who is the leader of the Labour Party in Oldham. Not just a council leader, he's the, you know, he's the guy in charge of Martin Judd. I'll get to that in a minute, Kel, on James Larkin. He was the leader of the council. Dr. Carolyn Wilkins, OBE, chief executive of Oldham Council. Surely someone should have made a statement. And now that it's come out in the public domain, <laughs> of course it's not going to happen. Why would Howard Sykes raise a query about about this. The Tories are in disarray, scared. I agree with you, Gary. It's about leadership, mate, isn't it? Whether I like it or not, this lad was one of my own. I am mortified, I can give all of the assurances that the council has investigated every place where he had access to children and appropriate investigations have taken place and parents who need to be concerned, we have spoken with directly. We will not be making another statement on this issue until the trial concludes. How hard would that be? Why are you not giving the parents of Linda School the reassurances they need? Primary and nursery school. And let's be clear, there is no way he found out or the council found out about this now. Let me share with you the process that would have happened at the very least. An arrest would have took place. If I knew his house was raided... The council surely knew his house was raided. His employer would have been notified because the police would have done inspections. He would have been suspended from the Labour Party. There would have been an investigation. He would have been either expelled or resigned. One of the two would have had to have taken place before he removed before his name was removed from being the councillor. He would have appeared at Thameside Magistrate Court, first of all. All of these steps would have took place before he turned up at Minstrel Street Court like, this week.
They should be the ones telling us. We shouldn't hear about it in a newspaper from an anonymous source in the council who wants to focus on. Not that he was a governor of Lindhurst, no. But what will happen to his seat? So I'm, uh, I'm really uh, enjoying how I can see all the comments. So it means a lot to me. I can see who's saying them. There's just one here I can't see. So I'm not sure who this person is. Uh, not one mainstream council has come out. And sp uh, so they'll have to approve that ECAM link at the top and it'll work for them. It does, doesn't it, Denny? The silence makes them all guilty. And why is the opposition not saying something? I don't know about Sykes saying how good he is, but you also, uh, you also may release this earlier in the week. The lad's out for a drink. Front and centre holding the selfie is our young Martin. Sean Fielding to the side. Councillor Peter Davis with a straw in his drink. I think the guy with the glasses, unless I'm mistaken, is Connor Green. He's the parish councillor. And this is where it gets murky for me. The bearded lad. Guy Parker, executive policy advisor at Oldham Council. They're all in it together. What's an executive policy officer going out drinking? What's a Hollywood councillor out drinking with a couple of guys, from councillors from Failsworth and where's he from? Where's Connor Green from? If that's Connor Green. Is he not from up Saddleworth way somewhere? I didn't want to say anything, Paul, because uh, I remember uh, I was once having a drink uh, with a with a, a, a young lady friend of mine, and uh, for some reason I was drinking vodka at the time, and she was drinking pints, and he put the pint in front of me and the vodka in front of her, and we both looked at each other before we swapped it around, and uh, it was one of my one of those moments in life where I thought, no, never again. But no, there you go. You can see. It's a cosy relationship, isn't it? They're all too close. The council officers, the councillor, who's watching who? Who's holding who to account? I don't know him, Dougie. I don't know who Guy Parker is apart from uh, who, you know, his title. But it is, you know, he's an executive policy advisor for the council. Well, there you go, Paul. Maybe someone in Saddleworth, Saddleworth North. You've got candidates in Saddleworth North, aren't you, Paul? I don't know if it's uh, if it's Gary or if it's someone else. They should ask Connor. What did he know? What is his friendship? With Martin Judd. They all think the smart asses, Dougie. They think we're stupid and they're all smart asses. How dare they not tell us? And this goes back. This goes back. To May last year. That I know of when his house was raided. And they had the audacity to keep a straight face. And at the time, they would have known that Blythe had been convicted. A few months later, this guy gets arrested and charged. 
and disappears off the council webpage. At Christmas time, a teacher was done for having access to kids and he was convicted. Who's the barefaced liar? Who's protecting paedophiles? And who's protecting our children? Let's move on. I know some of you guys send me this stuff and I don't know why. I mean, I'm, it's not a criticism. People can do what they want. So it's, you know, I, I get all that. But I don't even know why you bother with these idiots, uh, you and Stuart and Neil Wilby. As a journalist and accredited court reporter, there is an inherent duty to report any prejudicial comment on live cases. None of us are commenting on the live cases. We're commenting on what we read in the bloody newspaper. And you can Rajas rabble all you want, you prick. And as for that other guy, who's suddenly become Fielding's unofficial PR, it would be clearly be inappropriate for Councillor Fielding, the Labour Party, or the council to comment on the matter. No, you numpty. They are obliged to comment on the matter. What did he know, Maya? What did he know? This will play out until next year, but I urge, I urge, because I know, you know, I'll re I release bits of this at some point, so uh, this will probably make its way to, uh, to the council or the police or someone at some point, so I'm not really that bothered. I urge... Oldham Council, I urge Sean Fielding to issue a statement to the parents of children at Lindhurst School and any other place where Martin Judd had access to children and young people, that the appropriate safeguarding checks have taken place and that their children are safe and were never harmed. I'm surprised he's married, Dougie. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on. Just give me a, a second to, uh, let me just do the transition clip for a second. Just give me a second. Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. Okay, we still here? Good. Let me see how many people are. Well, I'm still at 64, so we, you know, 65. So I've lost a four or a five of you, but no, it doesn't matter. We've got a good uh, uh, a good intimate gathering. I think we're at 103 or 104, I think, uh, right now. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. We'll get a few more, I think, as time goes by. And uh, right. You've all been asking me about James Larkin, right and north. Yep. And James Larkin. Silence continues over councillor suspension. The mystery over right and north councillor James Larkin's suspension by the Labour Party remains ongoing. The correspondent, I think this was right and Shaw correspondent, confirms in our September paper, councillor Larkin has been stood down by the party for whom he retained a right and north seat in May 2016. A Labour spokesperson said he was suspended pending an investigation. We approached the Labour Party for an update on October the 11th and asked if Councillor Larkin and Councillor Montazali 
Azad, also suspended, had now been interviewed and if any investigation had been launched. The reply on the same day was, we do not comment on individual cases. The contempt... The contempt that they treat us with. I'll get to Rod Blythe again in a bit. Now, there's an issue with this. And I can only share what I, what I would do if I was James Larkin. Now, James Larkin has messaged me. He has messaged me with his phone number and asked me to give him a call. Because uh, he... Uh, I'll read it. I'll read it to you. Let me find it on my messenger. I'll, I'll read it to you. James Larkin. Hello, Roger. I am former councillor James Larkin of Royton North. Please can you call me to discuss my name appearing in one of your posts? Piss off! With his phone number. Piss off. I'm done with being threatened directly or indirectly by you and your mates in the Labour Party. Get stuffed. The way I see it, James, is that I would be issuing a statement if I was you. Clarifying why you've disappeared. Because all of these people here want to know what you did. I don't know what you did. All I know is you've disappeared. In the same way Martin Judd disappeared. You were a councillor and I will put your name down where I want. Because the people have a right to know in this town, you lot have destroyed this town. If I was you, I would, I, you know, I look at this and, I, and I'm playing this out, right? I'm role playing this here. I'd be like saying... You know what, guys? I was caught with two prostitutes and some lines of coke. But at least I didn't have any child abuse images on me. I was caught doing 100 miles an hour along Broadway, driving the wrong way side of the road, pissed out my head. But hey, at least I'm not a paedophile. The only person who can clear any ambiguity around yourself is yourself. So don't threaten me with, a, with a, my name appearing. These people won't phone in and they won't have a conversation. They think they're, you know, the bully boys. It's like that Bashworth, barrel gate, bootlegger. I can't clear his name. I don't know what he's done. I've never said he's done anything. Apart from the fact that he's disappeared. And I'm not the only one asking the question. Silence continues over councillor's suspension. The mystery over Royton North Councillor. James Larkin's suspension. So go on then, James. Why are you no longer a councillor? Your dad was a councillor, wasn't he, James? You're also a chair, not just a governor of a school, you're a chair of governors of a school, though, aren't you? I've not made that up. I'm sure you're a chair of governors of a school. And you also had a relationship with this man, didn't you? Rod Blythe, who Charlotte Green wanted to make sure all of you knew it doesn't matter that he was convicted of having indecent images. No, he was convicted of child abuse. Do you see how they work the way around it? It was convicted of child abuse, Charlotte. And who gives a... Who cares whether you use the council's computer to download or not? Why weren't the people told? How many children did he have access to in our town? Was he a governor of a school? 
Was he a member of the Scouts? Thanks, so yeah, he was a chair of governors at Mayfield. Yep. So I've got some... Uh, a couple of messages I think some people haven't been able to get on. I'm not sure, so let me just text. Oh, no, it's just information about uh, Linda Skill. No, some people have contacts in Linda. It's disgraceful, isn't it? It's absolutely disgraceful that even the teachers didn't know who covered it up. Who hid it? Why did he resign from Linda's school? What was said? There is a problem in our town. In category A abuse, Denise. So that there's no ambiguity for Charlotte Green or any of her other mates. That, I don't even know who the guy's name was. He wrote the uh, article in the Oldham Times. Chris Jaffrey. Chris Jaffrey or Charlotte Green. Category A child abuse is penetrative abuse. It's not pictures of naked children. It's pictures of penetration. Sorry, David, I have no idea why your Facebook just logged you out. I can't help you with that. Category A, child abuse. And they can't even bring themselves to use the term child abuse. Of course, the council also can't bring itself to tell us all how much they fund the local press. Well, you were here at the beginning, Mayab, criticising my 10-minute uh, countdown, and still people joined us late or had problems. <laughs> Jim McMahon wants to talk some nonsense about allegations of child protection failure to do with me, complete fabrications, yet he has nothing to say about his mates. Debbie Abrahams this week has been writing three, four page letters to God knows where about the plight of Kashmir. And nothing on the systematic grooming and gang rape of children from a school in her constituency and a report that is delayed for an unspecified amount of time. Which takes me on to Failsworth School. I put this uh, 
message up at the beginning of the uh, recording I uh, I shared for everyone else. It was only up for a second or so. This is a text message from one of the, uh, I suppose, victims. I felt, okay, I shouldn't have kissed him, but I felt like I had no choice. I wanted out that classroom. He locked the door and said, one kiss and I can go. I've had more information about Failsworth School. And notice, complete silence from Sean Fielding, because he was a governor at that school. Multiple Labour Party politicians, even an MP, were governors at that school. Council officers were governors at that school. And I'm saying it. I'm looking at you. And I'm saying it so you can all see exactly what I'm saying. There has been a cover-up of child abuse at Failsworth School. Over at least a decade, if not longer. And at least one of the individuals involved has a direct relationship with Sean Fielding. I'm looking at some case files and I'm looking at there was a court case that I'm aware of that didn't make it to trial. And there's something to do with an individual who was convicted around 2010. But they somehow kept the Failsworth link quiet. And if they've done it at one school, they've done it at other schools. I have friends who are teachers. Some of my best friends are teachers. They're disgusted. They did not enter teaching to fail children this way, to allow predators inside the school and acts outside the school to sexually abuse them. So it's sexually abused children. They didn't become teachers for that. My information or my understanding, Victor, will as with the Rod Blythe case, was that it was common knowledge. The people who brought me the information to do with Martin Judd last year were politicians from inside the Labour Party. Because the bought and paid for Carolyn. The council pays the local press. And in return... The local press says and does what the council asks of it. I don't think it's any more complicated than that. I miss Ali Akbar. I hope he'd sign up, uh, but he hasn't yet. But he sent me this. He calls it Granny Harrison. Common knowledge to the councillors that I speak to anyway. They knew about Rod Blythe. So, the question raised to Jenny Harrison to which she hasn't responded. And remember, 
I'm clear on this. If you are a counsellor, sorry, if you are an old council employee, so if you're an employee for Oldham Council, at the time you stood to be councillor in Oldham, that is electoral fraud. My understanding is Jenny Harrison was a teacher at the time she stood. But then I've heard today from a number of other sources that there are a number of councillors where the rules were bent. I don't believe this is something we called bending rules. It's either electoral fraud or it isn't. The rules exist for a reason. So yes, there are a number of councillors in Oldham who stood to be councillor candidates while still employed by the council. And we all understand why the Electoral Commission doesn't like that. Because of the nepotism, because it opens yourself up for corruption, because of the allegation of an old boys club of the council officers looking after the councillors and vice versa. It creates an environment where corruption flourishes. That's why it's not allowed. I am, uh, that's me, done, give or take. Let me just make this bigger so you can all see yourself. See some comments. By all means, if you've got any questions, ask them now before I, I finish with a bombshell, if you haven't had bombshells already. Sorry, I know it takes a couple of uh, minutes for it to catch up if I, for you to hear what I've said and uh, for it to work through. So, uh. No, no questions? All right. Anyone to phone me in and say any words? You're more than welcome. I'll pick up. There is a lady called Jane Barker who is fighting because she's a... Uh, Sean Fielding tried to have her sacked, called her a far-right activist and all the rest of it, and she's complained to the police and she's complained to the council and she's complained everywhere and she's been given the runaround, Lynn. Ordinarily, in the old world I came from, there would be an ombudsman and you could go to the ombudsman. But unfortunately, that's not a... That isn't... A route anymore because the ombudsman role apparently is just to make sure that they followed the process. It doesn't matter if the decision is wrong, it doesn't matter if what they did was corrupt. The role is to say whether the council simply followed the process or not. And then what would happen, like is happening in places like Bury, is you'd go to the MP and the MP would raise because the MP would help hold corruption in your town accountable. <laughs> the only problem is our MP is Jim McMahon and Debbie Abrahams. So that's uh, that's where we're up to there. It's corrupt. It's rotten, isn't it? The town's rotten. 
council protects paedophiles and it safeguards politicians who have relationship with these paedophiles and their networks because they deliver a block vote. It's just rotten. Just that every layer of this town is rotten. It's just difficult, David. Going down the civil route is so difficult. People talk about it from the outside in, and it's not a criticism, as though it's something that's straightforward. Uh, my will share with you. I spent the last of my life savings on a barrister's of opinion on trying to uh, take a dodgy newspaper uh, schools week to court. It's the one they all use all the time when they criticise me. The barrister said I had, I think it was a 65 or 70% chance of success which meant I could get insurance for the case to cover the other side's costs should I lose. But I couldn't get insurance for my side. That's separate. And, I, and they've changed the laws and the rules around civil uh, procedures. And I was told I'd have to put up £200,000. I haven't got £200. Never mind £200,000. The system's just set up so ordinary people like us are denied justice. And ordinary people like us, when we see injustice, are prevented from doing something about it. Which is why he calls us a racist and far-right activist and Nazis and threatens us with the police. The only way to stop this, the only way to stop this, is we start need to start having people like you, all of you, as councillors and politicians in our town, holding this corruption to account, speaking out against injustice. Because at this moment in time, you've got Brian Hobin, who's there on his own, the only chance we have. You don't need to thank me for the hard work at home. My, it's, I don't mind doing it. I'm stuck at the moment. My life is where it is and I am where I am. And if I'm of value to the people who, from the town I care about, then that's fine. You know, you've all seen the will be in the map mods and stuff claiming I don't live in the town and I don't have a connection to the town. I think it's very clear to people where I claim my roots to be and where people accept my roots to be. Next week. Next week. I... I know the council will get the hands of this one way or another. So Dr. Carolyn Wilkins, what you do, or what I do, is, is dependent on what you do because I've raised this issue with you before. I've got the emails, you've got the emails. I've spent 25 years of my life protecting children and young people in our communities from extremists and terror terrorists whatever you think of me you can't take that away from me because that's what I've done and I'm horrified by this image that I'm going to put up now and what else was leaked for, to me smuggled out of Glodic I'll put the image up I won't say anything else and I'll bid you all good night Do not fear them. Do not fear any of them. <laughs>